Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at pure mathematics exam question on trigonometric equations and identities. Here is the exam question. Part A, prove that sec x over 1 plus sec x minus sec x over 1 minus sec x is identical to 2 cos x squared x. x is not equal to n pi, n is an element of the set of integers. Ladies and gents, please pause the video, have a go at part A. Once you've got your complete solution, then play the video. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. I'm going to start off with the left hand side, use a bit of algebraic manipulation and a bit of trigonometric identities in order to arrive at the right hand side. But before I do this, let's have a look at the right hand side. So RHS equals the 2 cosec squared x is the same as 2 over sine squared x. So my target is to start from the left hand side, use a bit of manipulation until I arrive at 2 sine squared x, which is the same as 2 cosec squared x. Now with proof questions, it's all about creativity. Uh, there's more than one method that you can actually pursue. But I'm going to pursue my method, your method might be a little bit different, but as long as you arrive at 2 cos x squared x with the correct calculations, then that's completely fine, you should be able to get full marks. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. So I'm going to start off with the left hand side. Equal, I've got sec x over 1 plus sec x minus sec x over 1 minus sec x. The first step is to combine the fractions using cross multiplication. So I've got sec x multiplied by 1 minus sec x minus sec x multiplied by 1 plus sec x all over 1 plus sec x multiplied by 1 minus sec x. I can expand the brackets in the numerator, so if I start off with this bracket here, I've got sec x minus sec squared x, then this bracket here, minus sec x minus sec squared x, all over. Now over here I notice that I've got a difference of two squares, so that there simplifies to 1 minus sec squared x. Okay, so sec x minus sec x cancel out. We've got like terms over here. Minus sec squared x minus sec squared x is minus two lots of sec squared x all over one minus sec squared x. Okay, now instead of fraction, I'm going to write the operation division. So I've got minus two sec squared x divide by one minus sec squared x. Okay, so how do I carry out the division? Well, I can use keep, change, flip. That's what I need to use. That's my GCSE knowledge. Okay, so equal, I can keep the first term, which is minus 2 sec squared x. Division changes into multiplication, and I take the reciprocal of the second term. In other words, I flip it. So I get 1 over 1 minus x squared x. Okay, now I can introduce a cos squared x in my proof. So I know that minus 2 sec squared x is the same as minus 2 over cos squared x multiplied by 1 over 1 minus sec squared x, which is 1 over cos squared x. Okay, right, let's take this a step further. We can keep that as it is, so minus 2 over cos squared x multiplied by, to make this fraction a bit more simple, I can multiply top and bottom by cos squared x, because at the moment I've got fraction here which makes it look a bit more complicated. So to simplify it, multiply top and bottom by cos squared x. Ladies and gents, I get a new fraction, and my fraction, which is equivalent to this fraction, is cos squared x because 1 times cos squared x is cos squared x, and in the denominator, I need to multiply these two by cos squared x. So the 1 times cos squared x is cos squared x. Take away 1 over cos squared x times cos squared x is just 1. Notice that we've got a cancellation. The cos squared x cancel out. Okay, so this reduces my trigonometric statement into minus 2 over cos squared x minus 1. Right, so how do we go from here to here, this right-hand side over here, 2 over sine squared x? Well, we've got a cos squared x minus 1. 
we can apply an identity in order to rewrite this in terms of sine. So we know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal 1. Okay, so we've got cos squared x minus 1 is equal minus sine squared x. We can rearrange this identity. Hence, the denominator becomes minus sine squared x. So the negatives cancel, and we're left with 2 over sine squared x, and that was my target. And that 2 over sine squared x is precisely 2 cosec squared x. So equal to cosec squared x, which is the right-hand side, as required. End of proof. So that there completes part A of the exam question. Moving on to part B of the exam question. Hence, this means I refer back to answer in part A. Solve for theta between 0 and pi, sec 2 theta over 1 plus sec 2 theta, minus sec 2 theta over 1 minus sec 2 theta, equal 3 minus 2 cot squared 2 theta, giving your answer in radians to three significant figures. Please pause the video, have a go at part B. Once you've got your complete solution, then play the video. Let's have a look at the solution to part B. Now, this left-hand side over here is similar to this left-hand side. The only difference is we replace the x's with 2 theta. So that there simplifies to this right-hand side, but we replace the x with 2 theta. So solving this equation using our answer to part A is the same as solving the equation to cosec squared 2 theta equal 3 minus 2 cot squared 2 theta. Okay, so the issue over here is that we've got two different trigonometric ratios. We've got a cosec squared 2 theta and we've got a cot squared 2 theta. We can't solve the trigonometric equation as of yet. We need to apply an identity. So I know that 1 plus cot squared 2 theta is identical to cosec squared 2 theta. So using this approach, I can take this solution a step further. I can replace the cosec squared 2 theta with 1 plus cot squared 2 theta. So I've got 2 multiplied by 1 plus cot squared 2 theta equal 3 minus 2 cot squared 2 theta. This is brilliant because now I've got one trigonometric ratio in the equation and that is the cot squared 2 theta. Right, so now I'm going to expand the brackets. So this gives me 2 plus 2 cot squared 2 theta equal 3 minus 2 cot squared 2 theta. Right, so I can collect the cot squared 2 theta. So if I take this to the left hand side, I get 4 cot squared 2 theta equal, if I take the 2 to the right hand side, I get 3 take away 2, which is 1. Now I can divide both sides of the equation by 4. This gives me cot squared 2 theta equal 1 over 4. Now to make cot 2 theta the subject, I must take the positive and negative square root of the right hand side. So I've got cot 2 theta equal cot 2 theta equal. So the square root of 1 over 4 is just 1 over 2. The minus square root of 1 over 4 is minus 1 over 2. Now I know that cot 2 theta is 1 over tan 2 theta, so I've got 1 over tan 2 theta is equal 1 over 2. And I've got 1 over tan 2 theta equal minus 1 over 2. I can take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation. This gives me tan 2 theta equal 2 or tan 2 theta equal minus 2. Right, so I'm solving for theta, but my angle is 2 theta. This means that I need to double the interval. So I've got the interval 0 to pi. I can multiply the entire interval by 2. So if I do this, I get 0 times 2 is 0, is less than theta times 2 is 2 theta, is less than pi times 2, which is 2 pi. Now, I can let capital X equal 2 theta. Okay, so I'm solving for capital X, which is more than 0, but less than 2 pi. I'll be solving two equations. I've got tan x, tan capital X equal 2, and then I've got tan capital X equal minus 2. So over here the tan is a positive number, and over here the tan is a negative number. Let's start off by solving this particular equation. So my principal solution, the solution that I obtained using my calculator for capital X, will be 
1.1071 to four significant figures. Now to obtain all the other solutions from 0 to 2 pi, I must draw a cost diagram. So here is my cost diagram. Cosine is positive in this quadrant. All is positive in this quadrant. Sine is positive in this quadrant. And tan is positive in this quadrant. So I've got zero. If I go anti-clockwise positive angles, so zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Now my tan x is a positive number. Tan is positive in the all quadrant and in the tan quadrant. These acute angles over here by symmetry is 1.1071. So my first solution is 1.1071. My second solution would be pi plus 1.1071. So capital X is equal 1.1071. Okay, second solution, pi plus 1.1071, which is 4.249. Okay, these are my solutions to four significant figure. I'm going to round off to three significant figures at the end to avoid rounding errors. Now, capital X, that there, was 2 theta. So I've got 2 theta equal 1.1071 or 4.249. Finally, I can divide by 2 to work out the solutions for theta. So to three significant figures, now I would obtain the following answers. 0.5 five four okay and then two point one two three significant figures okay now i must solve this particular equation so i can work out x the principal solution using my calculator i can take tan inverse of minus two so if i do this i get minus one point one zero seven one to four significant figures to obtain all the solutions from 0 to 2 pi, I must draw a cast diagram. So here is my cast diagram. Cosine positive here, all positive here, sine positive here, tan positive here. Okay, um, so we've got 0 going anti-clockwise positive angles, so pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now we know that tan is negative. Tan is negative in two quadrants, the sine quadrant and the cosine quadrant. If I go clockwise, I'm measuring negative angles. Now remember, ladies and gents, we're only solving from 0 to 2 pi, so we should ideally be going anti-clockwise, not clockwise. But I'm going to, over here, go clockwise to show that this angle here, clockwise, is negative. So that will be a minus 1.1071. But then the acute angle is the positive angle of that. So that will be 1.1071. By symmetry, this acute angle is also 1.1071. Now I'm going to avoid going clockwise because I want all the positive solutions from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll be going anti-clockwise. So going anti-clockwise, my first positive solution is that solution there, which is pi, take away 1.1071. So x equal 2.034 to four significant figures. I'm going to reject this one here because that negative solution is outside the interval, but that negative solution helps us label the acute angles. So now that negative solution is no longer necessary. So my first positive solution going anti-clockwise is 2.034. My second positive solution, I go all the way around until I hit this line. That would be 2 pi, take away 1.1071. So ladies and gents, this gives me 5.176 to four significant figures. Now I can replace the capital X with 2 theta. I'm trying to solve for theta. So 2 theta is equal to these two angles. My final step is to divide these two angles by 2. Okay, rounding my answers now to three significant figures to avoid rounding errors. So I've got theta equal 1.02 and 2.59 to three significant 
figures. So all in all, the solutions to this particular equation for theta between 0 and pi is going to be 0 0.554, 2.12, 1.02 and 2.59 to three significant figures. That there completes the exam question and this teaching video of pure mathematics exam question trigonometric equations and identities. If you found the teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.